He was averaging 3.6 points per contest. The Suns are coached by Cody Toppert, Tyler Gatlin, and Earl Barron, along with Nick Friedman and the Sioux Falls Sky Force in their starting lineup. We'll start with Larry Drew, two, averaging 10.1 points and 5-point-run rebounds and 7.9 assists per contest. A 6-2 guard out of UCLA. Rodney Pryor will get the start tonight at a guard, and he is averaging 10.2 points per contest, 6-5 out of Georgetown. Ike Wamu will get a start at the other guard. He is a 6-5 guard out of UNLV, averaging 12.6 points per game. Alonzo G will be the forward in the lineup. He is averaging 17.8 points per contest. This will be his sixth game with the Sky Force, averaging 5.6 rebounds, a 6-6 forward out of Alabama. And the final entrant in the starting lineup for Sioux Falls will be Jimmy Taylor. And he averages 5.3 points, 4.4 rebounds, and two blocks per contest. He is 6'10 out of Alabama. So two Alabama Crimson tied in the starting lineup. The third Alabama member of the Sky Force has been suffering just a bit, Tony Mitchell. And he is going to be coming off the bench for the Sky Force tonight, averaging 22.2 points per contest, but it's still it's unknown how available he will be for the Sioux Falls Sky Force tonight. Special jerseys for the Sky Force tonight. And the Northern Arizona Suns will save the ball as it rolled all the way to their basket baseline on the other end of the court. And they'll play to the basket on my right. Up top, Studeville. A couple of dribbles to the right. And we've got an offensive foul. He's trying to set a screen. Will be, I believe, Xavier Silas. So he'll be whistled for the foul. The Sioux Falls Sky Force are coached by Nevada Smith. And Anthony Carter and Kasib Powell. We'll give you a little bit more detail on the Sky Force uniforms for tonight. As a jumper from the corner, no good for G. And we're still scoreless as they'll go pell-mell to the right side of the court. And the pass stolen away. Here comes Rodney Pryor. Who will bounce pass over to G, who will spin towards the middle. Left side of the court. Now he'll advance to the goal. He'll miss the shot. Tip is no good. G tried to pivot down low, and the ball knocked off the floor. G touched it last. The Sisseton Wapiton Oyate Tribe is the sponsor of the jerseys, and they've done this for the last few years. And the la and, and in contrast to the last few years, they've had a Lakota saying, or in the Sky Force in the Lakota language on the jerseys, but not this time. They've got force on the jerseys, but some very interesting color schemes. They got turquoise, black, and Studeville shot blocked by Taylor. Turquoise and black diamonds, a couple of the turquoise diamonds outlined in silver. Very sharp jerseys. Pat, got ball stolen away from G. And now we've got a shot on the other end. Goes in for Josh Gray in traffic. Drew a little contact, but instead, it will be a shot made for Gray in the Suns lead it 2-0 on the other end. Shot for Wamu on the drive, no good. Quickly the other way, Silas. He will stop, jump for a three, and it's good. And the first five points on the board, courtesy of the Northern Arizona Suns. And this is going to be a very quickly paced game, both two teams. In the top five in pace in the NBA G League, Alonzo G, left corner. He'll fire the three. It's no good. Rebound Jimmy Taylor. He'll put it back up and in. Those diamonds on the jerseys for the Sioux Falls Sky Force going down the tops of the trunks and also of the, the trunks and the tanks with the red numeral and the red force on the front of the jersey. Ball is tipped, and it goes to Alec Peters, who was on the sideline when he released his shot. Turnover on Northern Arizona. 5-2 to two the score. As the Sky Force will play it, trailing by a, a long one. Can cut it to a one-point game with one on the short side. Jimmy Taylor leaves off for Drew. Right of the lane. Drew will step back. Head of the lane. Three is good. So we're tied at five. So it looks like the two teams playing straight up even through the first Two and a half minutes of the contest as we close down on 9.15 remaining in the period. Nice pass down low as Studeville passed it down low to Gray. Basket is good 
for Gray, and he'll go to the line as he was fouled on the attempt by Larry Drew, too. And for Drew, that is his first personal foul. From the line, Josh Gray is a 75% free throw shooter and is 1.8 steals per contest. That's along among the league leaders. As Gray will get to the line, and he will swish the free throw. No, excuse me, Harrison is among the league leaders. He'll come off the bench. But again, they do force a lot of turnovers for the Suns. There is a three for Rodney Pryor. That one is short. And the rebound, Silas. And the Suns will head the other way. Eight to five. Skyforce trail it. Suns in the lead. Here's a three for Silas again, in and out. And the rebound, Rodney Pryor will pull it down. Skyforce will head to the basket on my left. G will drive the lane, get to the dotted line. He will jump back for the jumper. It's no good. Nice box out. Alec Peters preventing Taylor from getting it. Then the Suns the other way. James over on the left. Gives it up to Silas who will gesture. They're trying to hit Peters in the post. Excuse me, Studeville on the post. Now they'll try to post it up with James. He'll work on Drew. That's a mismatch. Ball tried to get it to Studeville. Too much traffic. Skyforce with the steal. 8-12 mark of this first quarter. Skyforce trail, 8-5. They have the ball. Taylor leaves off for Pryor. It's a three, and it's good. And again, these two teams, mirror images of themselves. A five-point run to start for Northern Arizona. Skyforce answer back. And then three-pointers on each side of the board as we're tied at eight. And we've got an offensive foul as the Suns trying to clear some space down low. And they will whistle that one on Studeville. We've got a substitution early on in the sequence with 7.50 remaining in the first period. Ralier Hollis Jefferson will join the Suns lineup. Hollis Jefferson is a 6'6 forward out of Temple. 8.1 points per contest. Skyforce can get their first lead of the game on this trip. They did not lead at all when the Memphis hustle came to town on Christmas night. Jumper for Ike Wamu. He will swish it from 16. 10-8 as the Skyforce get their first lead of the ball game. And Larry Drew, too, is going to pick up his second foul as he was preventing Josh Gray from springing loose in the left baseline. And that will force a substitution for the Sioux Falls Skyforce. And here comes Tony Mitchell, who will replace Larry Drew 2. Mitchell, 22.2 points per contest, 6.6 rebounds, 4.3 assists, and 1.7 steals. But again, Coach Nevada Smith said that he has been a little under the weather since Christmas Day and not sure how much Tony Mitchell will be able to give him. But he'll probably give him what he's got. Hollis Jefferson drives the lane, misses the shot. Might have been affected by Tony Mitchell in the sequence. Taylor the rebound, and here comes Rodney Pryor, who goes up to launch. But his denied, but his fouled, he will go to the line for two. Well, you can see Rodney Pryor. He got loose, and boy, he was met at the rim by Alec Peters. And Peters will pick up the foul. Rodney Pryor scoring 28 points the last time out against the Memphis Hustle. And the free throw made in the first degree for Pryor. He will have another. Again, that box, door, box score for Pryor. 11 of 15 shooting, 4 of 6 from downtown. He was perfect from the line, but misses that attempt. And the score still 11 to 8. Pryor 1 of 2 from the stripe in that trip. Into the lane, here's Silas. His shot blocked, and he will be sprawled on the deck. Sent there by Jimmy Taylor, who will pick up the foul. 11-8 is our score. Timeout on the court with 6.56 remaining in the first quarter. And it's the Sioux Falls Sky Force 11 and Northern Arizona Suns 6, excuse me, 11-8. to eight. This is the NBA G League. Welcome to NBA G League Weekly. This is trending. NBA G League has struck a groundbreaking new partnership with Twitch, and I'm excited. 
Twitch is the world's leading social video service and community for gamers, with 15 million daily active users. NBA G League fans can expect up to six games to stream live on Twitch every week. To enhance the viewing experience, Twitch is adding interactive overlays and features called the NBA G League Extension. Viewers can compete to unlock achievements, climb leaderboards, and use other options to win prizes. You can check out NBA G League games on Twitch at twitch.tv slash NBA G League. Thanks for watching NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and we'll see you next time. Welcome back to the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, as the two teams on the court trying to snap losing streaks as the Northern Arizona Suns have dropped their last three coming into tonight. They've been, and they can, they've been on a road swing. Excuse me, their last game was at home against Oklahoma City. They lost at Texas, lost at Oklahoma City, and then Lost another one at home to Oklahoma City. The Sky Force, they have lost their last two, both at home to Texas and Memphis. Rodney Pryor leading Sioux Falls with four points early on, and Josh Gray with five points for the Suns. Neither team lighting it up from, from the court. Four of ten for Sioux Falls and three of seven for the Suns. And a chance for the Suns to cut it to two, or cut it to one. Well, now it is cut it to two as Silas misses the first free throw. Silas on the season, 92% free throw shooter. That's tops in the G League. So he misses. So that is pretty noteworthy, at least for the early portion of this game. And he missed them both, but he got his own rebound, put it up, and missed that one. And then the ball knocked off the floor. Last touch by Jimmy Taylor. And the Suns will keep it. Yeah, coming into tonight. For Xavier Silas, 35 of 38. 92%, but now he's 35 of 39. That'll knock him down a peg on the best free throw shooter in the G League. So it's still 11-8, but the Suns still have the ball after a couple of offensive rebounds. It's a three for Alec Peters. And does end up to be a three-point trip for the Suns. And we're knotted up with 6.35 remaining in the first period. Tony Mitchell working his way to the right side of the courts, way out by the hash. One-handed pass over to Jimmy Taylor. He'll get a return from, excuse me, Alonzo G. And the three for Tony Mitchell, actually long two for Tony Mitchell, makes it 13 to 11. Alonzo G is wearing the jersey number 14 tonight. There's a three for Peters. That one glances off the front iron. And the rebound comes to the Sky Force. Alonzo G wearing the number 23 normally. But he's wearing 14 tonight. There's a three for Ike Wamu. And so the Sky Force pushed the lead to 16-11. Hollis Jefferson at the top. He'll keep the dribble and hand it off to Peters. He's open for three again, and he'll hit the bottom. So a pair of three-point baskets for Alec Peters makes it 16-14. to 14. Taylor near the jump circle. will send a pass over to Mitchell. And there's the screen. Mitchell will use it, and then will jump it over Peters. It's too strong on the 15-footer. And the rebound to James, excuse me, Mike Young. And Young will settle it down over on the left side. And he'll take it left baseline. And they say on the floor with this one, with 5.18 remaining in the period. Suns will maintain. And Alonzo G will pick up the foul, and that is the fourth team foul on Sioux Falls. So the next one will put them in the penalty. Only three team fouls. Actually, one team foul whistled on the Suns. A couple of the others were player control fouls. Gray get in the lane, They'll send it over to the corner, and it's a three, and it's good for Shaquille Harrison, who is checked on. 13.2 points.
per contest. And he starts off with a three. But on the other end, it's Mike Wamu who will get a get a three to make it 19 to 17. Well, the two teams trading threes here in the goings. Here is Gray for three. That one is short. Rebound pulled down by Jalen Bradley, who was checked on. He is a 6-2 guard out of Oral Roberts. We'll leave it for Tony Mitchell off the screen, and he loses it. Josh Gray will pick it from him, and Josh Gray will take it into the lane, and he will score. 19 apiece. And here comes Bradley, his pass diverted, and it's stolen by Gray. Gray's got a two-on-one, and he'll take it in, leave it off, and that one is sent, packing by Rodney Pryor. I think some pebbles might even been indented into the hand of Rodney Pryor after that one got sent to the sideline. Ball is tipped. Peter Jock has checked on for the Northern Arizona Suns. It's a three, and it's good for Relier Hollis Jefferson to make it 22 to 19. Peter Jock for the Northern Arizona Suns is a 6-6 guard forward out of Iowa for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Three is short for Pryor. On the other end, Harrison, Lob City, that one hits the rim, comes right back, and that one is blocked. And there's another one. That one swatted courtesy of Tony Mitchell. And the pass too tall for Rodney Pryor. And the Sky Force turn it back over, and that is turnover number five. Each team has committed five turnovers. And about the same rate for the amount of points given up on those turnovers. And the Suns could build on that. Here's Hollis Jefferson. His three is no good. And A.J. Hammonds is checked on for Sioux Falls. He'll run the pivot for the Sky Force. And a pass. That one batted out of bounds. Relier Hollis Jefferson. As they tried to hit A.J. Hammonds in the post. Post the Hammonds entry into the lineup. He is a seven-footer out of Purdue. And he is on assignment from the Miami Heat. Pryor will get it into Hammonds to Bradley, who will set it up. Bradley over to Mitchell, who will jump for three. And that one's no good. And the rebound to Jock. Sons to the front court as Gray. A couple of dribbles, gives off to Peters. Another three is good. That's nine points for Alec Peters. 25-19. And the Suns have grown their largest lead of the contest of six points. Led by five earlier, 5-0. Five and here is a lob to Hammonds. His shot off the glass, no good, but he was fouled from behind with 2.51 remaining in the first quarter. Northern Arizona Suns lead the Sioux Falls Sky Force 25-19. This is the NBA G League. Play NBA G League Fantasy now to win weekly and grand prizes, like a trip to NBA All-Star Weekend for free at NBAGLeague.com slash fantasy. Follow the latest NBA prospects with the NBA G League app. With custom news feeds, highlights, and more, it's all you need to keep up with the game. Download for free from the App Store. a quiet first segment of the game is the leading scorer for the Northern Arizona Suns but has heated up from outside three of four from downtown and he's got nine points so halfway to his average 
as we get to the closing two minutes and 51 seconds of this first quarter. Suns are now shooting 9 of 19 overall, and that's 47%. They're 6 of 11 from downtown, and the Sky Force are 7 of 16 and 4 of 9 from deep. A couple of other notes as far as trends in this contest. Both teams about the same rebounding level in this contest so far. And the points in the paint, Suns have the advantage there, 6-2. to two. On the fast break, the Suns leading that category, 7-3. to three. A.J. Hammonds with the toss to make it 25-20. Hammonds on the season, 8.9 points, 5.9 rebounds. 75% from the line and drains a pair to make it a four-point game. And the clock resumes with the Suns. Harrison rolls a pass, but it's quickly run down by Hollis Jefferson, who will take it in the lane and then take it all the way through and then give it over to Silas, who will jump for three, and it's no good. Rebound to Rodney Pryor. Mitchell will run the show. And the Sky Force trail by four as we get to the final two and a half minutes of this period. Mitchell holds high, right of the lane, gives to Wamu a 25-footer. Yes, as Ike Wamu makes it 25-24 in a one-point game. 2-10 remaining in the opening frame. Silas off the screen, takes it in the lane. He is met by Bradley, but I think the foul came before Bradley knocked the ball out of Silas's mitts. And A.J. Hammonds will be whistled for the foul, and that's his first. It's the penalty for the Sky Force. Only two team fouls whistled against the Suns. And Silas to the line, and again, he missed two free throws earlier, but we'll expect these to go down the proper way. And the first one does to make it 26-24. And Jalen Bradley, a good three poor free throw shooter in his own right. He's about 92%, but he's not on the leaderboard, has not had enough attempts, and he missed again. That's amazing. He's missed three free throws after he missed only three free throws the whole season coming in. Wow. Pass a little offline, but Pryor able to pull it down. Turn fire, and it's too strong for Ike Wamu, and the Suns will board it and bring it front court. Young. Looking to get into the paint. Puts it over Hammonds. No good. Rebound to the Sky Force. On the run is Wamu. He'll take it into the lane. And the pass is stolen by Hollis Jefferson. But knocked out of bounds as he was able to gather the pass. And then flipped it behind him, behind the back. And ended up hitting the baseline. Sky Force will keep it. Will they say, yes, it was stolen by Hollis Jefferson. So the Sky Force will have a full 24 seconds in this sequence. Wamu, he will get to the board and puts it off the glass and in. Ties the game, 26 apiece. The Sky Force are now up to 9 of 19 shooting. And Northern Arizona has missed their last two, but they will make it up here with a three. And it is from Young to make it 29-26. Minute 10 left in the period. Another pass batted, but then it's brought back by Jalen Bradley, who was able to track down the pass. Here's Wamu. His three no good, but Hammonds, I believe, will be called for an illegal screen. They, nope. They say, oh, Wamu stepped out of bounds. Nope, so there was no illegal screen. Wamu was out of bounds when he received the pass. So a three-point... Northern Arizona lead, which is now six after the three-point basket. That one, Xavier Silas hits again from downtown. He's got seven to make it 32-26. The Suns shoot a lot of threes, most of their shots from three-point range. And there's a tough one in the lane for Rodney Pryor. And it's 32-28. To the free throw line into the lane, that one knocked away, and then off the side, and they say last touch by Sioux Falls. And I believe they're gonna reverse the call, yes they do. So they will award that to the Sky Force with 25.1 left in the period. I believe the Sky Force will take a majority of the clock. 
1.1 seconds between shot and game clock. Mitchell, no, he'll loop it down to Hammonds. And the Suns will steal it, and they can play for the last shot. Down to the final nine seconds. Young. He will get the return pass from Silas, and he will put it up at the buzzer, short. And the clock will read zero to end the first quarter of action. Northern Arizona Suns 32, Sioux Falls Sky Force 28. We'll have the second quarter begin after this. This is the NBA G League. between the end of November and beginning of December, and they beat Santa Cruz and Iowa. But the Northern Arizona Suns, they have suffered three-game losing streaks three times. And the Sioux Falls Sky Force, they have suffered three-game losing streaks twice. So they're both about the same rate as far as wins and losses. Northern Arizona 7 of 12, Sioux Falls 8 of 12. And they're a four-point spread between the two teams as we start the second quarter. Alec Peters with nine. Ike Wamu with 13 to lead Sioux Falls. As we get started in quarter number two as the Sky Force with a long jumper for Hammonds is no good. Foot on the line for Hammonds, but it didn't go anyway. And the Suns will get their first possession of the second quarter. Studeville, a couple of dribbles near the top. He'll hand off to Harrison. Harrison, pick and roll, nice pocket pass, but it's stolen away. Alonzo G ends up on the baseline with the ball in his hand, so the Suns will keep it with six to shoot. So they say no change of possession. And again, they're trying to hit Studeville down low. Those passes, Studeville not able to reel them in. Northern Arizona Suns in their road purple jerseys. Silas off the curl on the inbound. No good on the shot. And then a long outlet pass is too long. And the Sky Force will turn it over. And both teams have been pretty loose with the orange in this one. That is turnover number nine for Sioux Falls. Six times Northern Arizona Suns have cut it loose. So we've kind of followed the same pattern in this second quarter as we did in the first. Both teams not able to find the net in the first minute or so of the period. Oh, there was a Tony Mitchell fell down. Relier Hollis Jefferson was open. And the foul as Mitchell tried to recover. Yeah, there was a lot of body there. Mitchell claims otherwise. 
But earlier, really Hollis Jefferson, 77% free throw shooter. In and out on the first one. And again, you look at that first quarter output, two of five, now two of six for the Northern Arizona Suns from the free throw line. Rebounding about even. Second one is good for Hollis Jefferson. And it's a five-point game with 10.55 remaining. The Suns leading by five briefly a couple of times. Alonzo G all the way to the hole. He'll put it up and in to make it 33-30. to Harrison gives over to Hollis Jefferson. Back to Harrison, left side. And he'll wait for the screen for Studeville. Work the pick and roll. And then they give it down low to Silas. And his ball comes away. Seven to shoot. And it's Mike Young who is able to use his length. And then put that one, flip it up off the glass. 35-30. And quickly the other way. Alonzo G. He was scoreless in the first quarter. Now all of the starters for Sioux Falls have scored. G and Drew, too, the only starters on the court for Sioux Falls. Mitchell, Bradley, and Hammonds also on the court. The same can be all the three starters on the court for the Suns. As G misses the first free throw, he will have another. And Harrison will check out. Josh Gray will check back in. So now four of the five starters. Only Alec Peters missing from the lineup starter-wise. And that one rattles in and out for G. So an empty trip for Sioux Falls as the Suns have it off the rebound of the missed free throw. Here comes Studeville. His shot blocked by A.J. Hammonds. Studeville was in trouble because Hammonds was coming over, giving the help. Of course, there was a mismatch there. He was on Bradley, but good help and rotation. Seven to shoot as Gray will shoot for three. It's no good. Rebound tipped off the floor. Studeville unable to come away with the loose ball. Actually, basically just taking it and keeping it from the Sky Force and preventing an outlet pass. Sky Force, trail by five, 9.45 remaining. Pull-up jumper for Larry Drew, two is good. 35-32, as the Suns work it. Silas will back away, two-handed pass, and is broken up by Hammonds. A three-on-three -three the other way with Mitchell, who will turn tail. One-handed pass over to Drew on the right side. They'll post it up with Hammonds. Hammonds, dotted line. And then the ball down low. Tried to hit G on a cut to the basket. Hits off of the Arizona squad out of bounds. Studeville out. Peters is in. And Relier Hollis Jefferson, the only reserve on the court for the Suns. Ten to shoot as Bradley rolls it to G. G will spin. Lost the ball going up. And then he's got a jump ball, I believe, down low. Or is it a foul? I see a jump. I see a foul. Who's it going to be? And they will say jump ball with two seconds on the shot clock. So the Sky Force have to work quickly if they want to save this possession. Hollis Jefferson against G. Hollis Jefferson, 6'6", and G also 6'6". G out of Alabama. Hollis Jefferson out of Temple. All right, the ball goes up, and it will be batted towards the scorer's table. And no time comes off the shot clock. So no possession was awarded, so the Sky Force will get it. It was touched last by Hollis Jefferson. So we'll see how the Sky Force play it here with the trigger man, Drew Two. Tony Mitchell, he will dribble, shoot, and it hit rim, but it was after the release the buzzer sounded. Again, too much time taken. Mitchell thought he had a little bit more time than he did. He'll double team the inbound, but then melt away into the regular defensive position. Young gives off to Hollis Jefferson and to Peters, being closely guarded by Alonzo G, who knocks it out of bounds with 13 to shoot. So someone 
has said, make sure you guard Alec Peters because he hit three of four from downtown in the first quarter. Into the lane, Josh Gray. That one rolls off. Tough break for Josh Gray. Jalen Bradley, he will take the, the express train to the free throw line and the pass a little bit too offline. G could not handle it. So the Sky Force turn it over for an 11th time. And we're only got 837 remaining in this first half. That's a lot of ball flying around for the Sky Force. The Suns have turned it over seven times. Young has the ball knocked free, and he touched it last out of bounds. It was knocked away by Hammonds. And then, in an attempt to recover, Young touched it last. With 8.23 remaining in this second quarter, the Sky Force are going to call for time. And it's the Northern Arizona Suns leading 35-32. This is the NBA G League. Welcome to NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and this is Rewind. Now, we have some absolutely incredible plays that we're about to put in the playback machine. A ski of Booker of Northern Arizona makes the bounce pass through the legs of the defender, Anthony Bennett, with the earth-shattering dunk. Terrence Ferguson, on assignment from the Oklahoma City Thunder, provides a little of his own. And showtime for Terrence, and he follows it down. Joel Ballenboy, a two-way player of the Milwaukee Bucks, goes baseline. Ballenboy throws it down. Perry Jones of the Iowa Wolves with the one-handed stick. And how about the Westchester Knicks working the long distance alley-oop? Isaiah Hicks with the finish. Thanks for watching NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and we'll see you next time. Well, the second quarter has not been kind to either team, for that matter. Well, in the first three and a half minutes of action, Skyforce have outscored the Suns four to three after a pretty brisk pace through that first quarter of action. The Suns got up 26 shots in the first quarter. They are one of six so far in the second. The Sioux Falls Sky Force are two of four in this period. After getting up 20 shots in quarter number one. A score, the Northern Arizona Suns 35 and the Sioux Falls Sky Force 32. And still Alec Peters with nine and Ike Wamu with 13 to lead their respective teams. Drew two at midcourt. He's got Wamu with him now, and that pass deflected, but Alonzo G able to run it down. And then he'll send it over to Mitchell. Mitchell for three. It's in and out. And again, we were kind of wondering if Mitchell's going to be able to give us, give the Sky Force a lot of time tonight, but he is. Had checked in early in the first quarter and has not left the court. Here is T. It is Young for three, and he will burn it down from the side and make it 38 32. On the other end, a quick burst to the basket for Alonzo G. He will go to the line for a pair. Down deep. And they will whistle that foul on Relier Hollis Jefferson. These two teams will meet two more times this season, but they will be both at in Prescott Valley. And they will be the final two games of the season, March 23rd and March 24th on back-to-back -back nights. The free throw for G is no good. That one rattled in and out of the cylinder. So a six-point margin, it remains. And the second one for G, in and out again. But the Sky Force get the rebound. Drew two, he will advance. 
Floater, good from the dotted line. 38-34, so the Sky Force do get a two-point trip. Gray, way out on the left. They'll be switched, and they'll pick up to Drew, and they'll give it off to Jefferson. Hollis Jefferson into the lane, sends to the corner. Xavier Silas, he will drive all the way in and score. And again, nice explosion, getting that good step to the basket. Mitchell. Back to Wamu. Here's a 29-footer. Short. And then a foul. They tried to cut loose a pass. As Relier Hollis Jefferson fouled by Wamu after the long one. So 40 to 34, the score. The Suns can get their largest lead of the game on this trip. Seven minutes remaining before intermission. As Gray working against Wamu at the top. And we've got Wamu, I think he's gonna pick up another one as he fought through the screen. And again, he and Rilir Hollis Jefferson locking horns quite a bit. Oh, and not it was not Wamu on that previous foul. My apologies. So that is the first foul for Wamu. Wamu was there mixing it up, but was, did not get that foul on the other exchange. Here's Silas for three, and it's good to make it a nine-point game, 43-34. That is three straight three-point baskets for the Suns. And on the other end, a three for Ikwamu atoning for his previous miss. On the other end, Pass, reeled in by Silas, and they'll send it back to Peters. Hollis Jefferson for three. That one's short, and that one will be tracked down by Larry Drew, too, and it's sent out of bounds by Rara Lear. Hollis Jefferson, who bowls over. People near the scorer's table, and about three chairs go with Hollis Jefferson. Oh, well, at least he, and there's uh, Xavier Silas and Tony Mitchell helping out the people in that area. That's, that's where the Heineman crew sit. Um, Phyllis was nearby. And I think one of her grandchildren there in the area, and they'll have to do a little bit of cleanup as a result. And adjustment of the chairs. Boy, it's give Hollis Jefferson the credit for getting out of bounds. I got some of the Skyforce hierarchy, and they got to reassemble the chairs. Yeah, that's the Heineman family. That's that's Rob and and a couple of that's one of the brother. That's one of the Heineman family. The brothers. He's part of the Sporting KC ownership group. And I think we're still needing a little bit more cleanup in that area. And Phyllis is Greg Heineman's wife. And of course, that lends me the opportunity to talk about Greg Heineman. He is a first-year nominee for the. Naismith Hall of Fame, and this will be for 2018. And the announcements of the entrance into the Hall of Fame will be during All-Star Weekend. He is a direct elect nominee under the Contributor Committee nomination category. And other notables in that category include Jim Valvano, Marv Alberch, Johnny Red Kerr, and Donnie Walsh as people who've had an impact on the sport of professional basketball. Three for Larry Drew, two is no good. And to the front court, here come the Suns. It is a three. It is good. The shooter's roll for Xavier Silas. They'll see it's a two. Long two from the corner. 45-37. Eight-point game. Alonzo G is going to drive, and he will hammer it down. Alec Peters wisely got out of the way of that freight train coming. Into the lane. Here comes Young. Knocked away. Off of Young out of bounds. So the defense... For the Sky Force, that was A.J. Hammonds who is back and knocked that one free. So 45-39. And again, these teams have been trading baskets throughout this stage of the second quarter. Drew will drive in, miss the shot, but he was fouled. He will go to the line for a pair. So this will be the first opportunity in the second quarter. Actually, it'll be actually the Suns did get. A pair of buckets back-to-back. -back. The 
And so the Sky Force, their first opportunity to string a couple of possessions together with points. Drew two at the line, and his first toss is good. This season, Larry Drew two has been at a 64% clip from the line. This is his fifth season with the Sioux Falls Sky Force. And he swishes them both. Larry Drew two. He is a dime distributor. And he hits a pair of free throws to bring the lead to four. Here's Silas for three, in and out. The rebound, Wamu. Sky Force the basketball. They can string three possessions together. Drew for three, and it is no good. And the rebound to the Suns. Here comes Gray, the other direction. He was trying to break down Hammonds. Gives it off to Peters, who will lay it up and in. Back to a six-point margin with 4.50 remaining before halftime as Mitchell holds high, has to cut it loose, and last touched by the Sky Force as Mitchell, early in the sequence, picked up his dribble and took a little time for the Sky Force to rotate over to get the ball away from him. And, and again, the Sky Force turn it over. That's number 12. And the... Suns have turned it over eight times to their point of view, but have surrendered more points off of turnovers. Although if they hit here, they'll all change. Here's a long jumper for Peters. It's for three, and it's 50 to 41. So another nine-point advantage for the Northern Arizona Suns. Drew into the lane, sends to Wamu. He'll set up for three. It is up and it is good for Ike Wamu, who's got 19 in this first half. And a three on the other end, no good. Wamu the rebound. And he will control it coming the other way. Is he feeling it? Well, he'll try. Heat check, no. That one's short. He needed to be about a half a step closer on that one. And probably a little bit more to the left on his Eam. Gray gives it up to Silas. Down low, Peters is alone, and he will lay it up and in. 52-44. Both teams heating up a little bit better in this second quarter. It's a little rough going early on. Here's the pick and roll with Drew. They'll try to post it now with Hammonds, who's down deep. A little bit too wide on the dribble. Gets it back, puts it up, missed it. And the rebound to the Suns as Gray will clear it. And the first double-digit lead potential for this trip as Gray, with a series of dribbles, drives it, scores it as he broke down Wamu and got past him. And the timeout called with 3.13 remaining in this first half as the Northern Arizona Suns lead it 54-44 to over the Sioux Falls Sky Force. This is the NBA G League. Play NBA G League Fantasy now to win weekly and grand prizes like a trip to NBA All-Star Weekend for free at nbagleague.com slash fantasy. in Sioux Falls, South Dakota as this game and one more before we get to the end of 2017 schedule. And it's the Northern Arizona Suns. They have outscored Sioux Falls. 
was a down to a four-point game briefly. But ever since then, the Northern Arizona Sun's been stringing some buckets together. And it's a 9-2 run to put together this current advantage. 54-44 with 3.13 remaining in the period. 20 of 43 from the floor for Northern Arizona. 16 of 34 for Sioux Falls. Again, those 12 turnovers looming large for the Sky Force in this one. And now there's another one. Here comes Josh Gray, and he will lay it up and miss, but then stuffed back home by Shaquille Harrison. 56-44, and now it's a 12-point game. Got to value the orange against this Northern Arizona Sun squad. Larry Drew, two gives off to Jimmy Taylor. His shot, hook up, no good. And the rebound to Harrison. And the Suns can push it further. They'll get it down low. Peter Jock with the layup to make it 58-44. 2.25 in ticking before halftime. As Drew hands off to Wamu. Wamu with 19 already. We'll take it in the lane, send it back out. Drew for three, and it's good. Drew with 12 to make it 58-47. Breaking the string of eight straight for the Suns. But still, they lead it by a bunch. And there's a three on the other end for Alec Peters, who has 19 of his own. 61-47. Drew two in the lane. They'll swing it. Wamu for three. That one kicks off the side, but Larry Drew will pick it up, and he will fire the three himself. That one's no good. Rebound to the Suns. Harrison will give off to Jock. Jock will adjust. He will fire the three short. And the rebound, Alec Peters will pull it down. And they'll get a second chance, 10 to shoot, as Gray will get into the lane, put it up, no good, but there's Hollis Jefferson, and they'll swing it around again. Another opportunity, three for Harrison. Finally, the Suns able to get it to make it a 64-47 lead. Back-to-back -back threes again for the Suns, and the lead is up to 17 into the lane. And a foul as Alonzo G got down deep. And they will award two free throws to G. With 106 remaining in the second quarter. So G back to the line. And he's got to hit one of these, you'd think. He is 0 of 4, now 1 of 5 as he hits from the stripe to make it 64-48. So Tony Mitchell will return for Sioux Falls, and Ike Wamu will sit. Wamu with 19 points, matching Alec Peters with his 19, but Peters is 7 of 8 from the floor. And a pair for G at the line. And it's a 15-point game. Here's Peters again. Yes! Alec Peters with 22. Eight of nine from the floor. Look out for that guy. 67-49. Rodney Pryor is checked back on in the lane. Hanging, tough shot. And it hits the baseline. Alec Peters touched it last. And the Sky Force will have it with 39.7 left in the period. Jimmy Taylor will get the inbounds pass. A dribble, looking for a relief, and he'll get it. Eight to shoot for Tony Mitchell, way up at the top. And Mitchell, his floater in the lane, no good. Tip no good, and still no good. There's Jimmy Taylor who says, I'm handling this. And he will stuff it down to make it 67-51 with 22.7 left in the period. And a brief timeout called by the Northern Arizona Suns. They want to set things up for the final 22.7 before half. A 16-point game. And again, the margin was 38-34. When the Northern Arizona Suns 
went on their binge and have since outscored Sioux Falls 27 to 27 to 17 to push that lead to 16, which it currently resides. And again, as high as 18 as we've gone through the proceedings. And the Suns will break and they'll take their time. They have to inbound it. This will be length of the court. Charles Watson, one of the officials, barking out to the Suns to say, hey, let's get things, get the show on the road here. And they will defend the inbound and they will put it in. And then the Sky Force and Suns will work their way back the other direction. Matt Calillo and Ben Sturt, the other two patrolling tonight. Down to the final 10 seconds as Gray heads to the left side. Seven seconds. He's still pounding it. Gives it up to Alec Peters. Fires and shooters roll. No. And the Sky Force. That one good if it goes. No. No, they say the whistle before the shot and after the buzzer sounded. And it's a 67-51 Northern Arizona lead over the Sioux Falls Sky Force as we hit halftime. Well, these two teams, last time out, the Northern Arizona Suns, they squandered a 19-point advantage and lost to the Oklahoma City Blue. Well, there's still 24 minutes left of basketball to see if that will be part of the scene going into the second round of action tonight. Well, we'll go through all of the scoring statistics Plus, we'll also have a conversation with the head coach of the Sioux Falls Sky Force, Nevada Smith, as we head to break. Back in two minutes, this is the NBA G League. Halftime at the Sanford Pentagon as the Northern Arizona Suns. Absolutely outstanding effort from Alec Peters. Six of eight from downtown and 22 points to lead the Suns to a 67-51 effort after the first half of action. 
Well, we talked with Coach Nevada Smith of the Sioux Falls Sky Force prior to the ball game and got his view of things that needed to be changed for the Sky Force after a night where they let their opponent do almost anything at will against Memphis on Christmas night. Uh, definitely. We were, uh, we were really bad defensively, uh, just, just atrocious. Uh, our effort wasn't great. Our rotations were poor. Our communication was poor. Uh, and when you combine all that, you get the score that, that we had. So uh, we got to, had to go back to basics a little bit here this week and you know work on some of the stuff we did in, in training camp. And uh, I don't think we did one offensive thing for three days. So uh, hopefully we come out and defend hard and, and we're talking and communicating and making life easy for ourselves. When you're trying to get that defensive mindset back, is that a function of the players and coaches working together, or is it the coaches saying this is what we have to do? Is How, how much is there a buy-in for, for both parties, for all parties to make it work? For anything to work, it's got to be both. Um, so I think we had a nice two days of hard practice uh, where guys bought in, guys were you know, doing what we were asking them to do and, and really doing a nice job with it, and our energy and effort were phenomenal. Um, if we play like that, we'll be fine tonight. Um, so it's been, uh, you know, a little both sides. You know, I think everyone was frustrated after the game uh, Christmas night, and you know, it was, it was, we all were a little embarrassed at our, at our play in front of a really nice crowd. So hopefully we got to uh, regain their trust by playing a little bit better. Now we are getting up to nine players now after being at, at the number of eight for a few days, and, and nine is still the number, I imagine, as, as we go forward into as we get into the final stages of the year. We'll have nine available, um, I think. Uh, Tony Mitchell's been out with illness all week, um, made an appearance today for the first time. So he's going to come off the bench, see how he feels. I don't know how he's going to feel. Um, we might be eight again. Um, if Tony plays, we'll, we'll be nine deep. So see how it goes. Everyone knows their minutes. Everyone knows their role. So in, in one uh, aspect, it might be a little easier. Now you look at Northern Arizona coming in, and they're a team that, that plays with pace just like you guys do. And But is are they a mirror image of what you do as far as their skill set? Um, I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't say mirror image. I think they're uh, they're built uh, for what they do. You know, they they're really active defensively. They try to get in passing lanes. They're trying to get steals and conversions. And you know, they got uh, some great shooters with Silas and Peters. And they play different positions, which is nice. They got a two and a four that really shoot it. Um, they freed up some minutes with uh, some trades this week, and uh, it'll be interesting. It's a, basically a new team, and, and they'll have four NBA guys tonight. Uh, we'll see how we handle that. So I guess that kind of gives your guys the challenge. It's like, you know, this is NBA caliber. If you can match up with these guys, then you know that you have a chance of making it to the next level. Yeah, our guys are a pretty confident group. Even when we don't play well, they, you know, they don't think it's because of them. <laughs> so I think we'll be all right. You know, it's uh, we, we seem to play better against teams that uh, play similar to them. Quick pace, shoot a lot of threes. And, uh, we seem to do a pretty good job with teams like that. So. Uh, we'll see how it goes tonight, you know, if we can slow them down. And, uh, we can speed up ourselves a little bit and get some easy shots and, and work off our defense and, you know, score and transition off stops. Uh, we should be all right. Well, that was before the game. As Coach Nevada Smith saw his team score 51 in that first half. And it's been a tough slog for the Sioux Falls Sky Force, especially the final stages of that second quarter where the... Northern Arizona Suns put together a pretty strong run and they get a 67-51 ball game, leading by as many as 18 during the latter stages of that second quarter. This copyrighted broadcast of the NBA G League LLC may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast, otherwise, otherwise distributed even, used in any form without the express written consent of the NBA G League. Well, and also, mention the changes for the Northern Arizona Suns. And that was due to a couple of trades that came down. That was yesterday afternoon as the Suns traded Askia Booker and also traded Anthony Bennett. As those two factors now moving on to different locations, 
Askia Booker is a very vital part of what the Suns have been able to do for much of the season and actually the last couple of years. Now moving on. Also the same can be said for Anthony Bennett. Anthony Bennett, the former first round, a former top draft pick in the NBA. But now he has also been traded. Of course, he had a little bit of an injury that prevented him from being on the floor against the Oklahoma City last Friday, but pending a physical, that should also go through for the Northern Arizona Suns. And basically, they did not get any players back in return, just the returning rights for a couple of players. 67-51 is our score. Stats next. This is the NBA G League. From the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the Northern Arizona Sun 67 and the Sioux Falls Sky Force 51. My name is Dan Peters, and I want to make sure I clarify everything that the Northern Arizona Suns have been able to do in their, their trading. They traded Askia Booker and their fourth-round pick in next year's draft to Delaware for the returning rights of Jarrell Benneman and the 87ers' first-round pick in the NBA G League draft. And they also traded Anthony Bennett and their third round pick to Maine for the returning rights to Wesley Saunders and the Red Claws second round pick in next year's draft, a pick that was owned by Windy City. So that was the transition, the transaction for the Suns over the past. And that was actually happened yesterday. Well, the eight players in the lineup for the Suns Eric Studeville has not scored, but the rest of them have. 22 of them from Alec Peters. 8 of 10 shooting, 6 of 8 from downtown. Then you've got 14 for Xavier Silas. Then 9 points, 8 assists for Josh Gray. 8.6 rebounds for Mike Young. And 8 points for Shaquille Harrison. 4 for Relier Hollis Jefferson. And bucket for Peter Jock. The Sioux Falls Sky Force, 19 for Ike Wamu who is 7 of 12 from the floor, 5 of 9 from downtown, 12 for Larry Drew, 2. Then you've got 6 apiece for Rodney Pryor, Alonzo G for their contributions, Jimmy Taylor with a couple of buckets with 4, and then Tony Mitchell and A.J. Hammonds with a bucket apiece. Actually, two free throws for A.J. Hammonds. 
for that matter. And as far as the team statistics, the Northern Arizona Suns have put up 52 shots so far, and that's common for them. 25 of 52, that's 48%. Uh, the Sky Force are 18 of 42, and that's 43%. 14 of 27 from deep for the Suns, and that's 52%. 8 of 21 for the Sky Force, which is decent, but not to the pace of what the Suns are doing. 3 of 7 from the line for the Suns, 7 of 12 for Sioux Falls. And one thing of note, the Sky Force have only 11 assisted baskets so far, which is well behind what they normally do. The Suns have been able to spread it around, but 20 assists so far as a team. Rebounds about even. And the turnovers, Sioux Falls has committed 13 in the first half, which has led to 16 Northern Arizona points. Eight turnovers for the Suns, and that has led to 12 Skyforce points. Points in the paint, 20 to 14 in favor of the Suns. Suns 11 of six, 11 to 6 in the second chance category, leading Sioux Falls there. And also, the Suns getting out on the break 15 to 5 in that effort. The largest lead, 64, excuse me, 67 to 49. The largest lead of the contest for Northern Arizona. The Sky Force led it by five early on. That was 16 to 11. But it's the Sioux Falls Sky Force trailing. And they have the basketball to start this third quarter. And it will be the 10 starters on the court. As Larry Drew, too, will receive the inbound pass from Jimmy Taylor. And the Sky Force trailing by 16. We'll go to work with Drew. Leave it off for G. Now to Rodney Pryor, who will drive. Pocket pass to Taylor. And it's knocked away. Turnover number 14 for Sioux Falls. And they'll swing it around to Josh Gray. Left side as the Suns will play to the basket on my left. Gray thought about the three. Instead, Peters is posting up left side of the lane. And he will step through and get the layup to go. Peters with 24. And the lead up to 18 again. And here's a three, and it's good for Ike Wamu. Now he's up to 22 points on the night. Suns the basketball. As Gray sets it up at the top, he runs into Taylor. There's Wamu, and then they'll back away with Young back to Gray. Seven to shoot as Gray rounds the curve. And then down low to Studeville, and he's called for steps. So we played just the first minute and 15 seconds of this third quarter. Studeville still scoreless to this point. Larry drew two to Wamu. Wamu looks to drive. He's cut off. They'll give it over to Pryor. Now back up to Drew as half the shot clock has gone by. Now pocket pass. No, he fakes the pass. And Drew lost the handle. Got it over to Wamu. The three is no good. And the rebound to Peters. To the front court. Young gives off to Peters. Quickly guarded by Larry Drew too. Back to Young. And now Gray is wide open. He will fire. And he is no good. Rebound. Jimmy Taylor. Skyforce dodge a bullet on that one because Gray had all day. Here's Pryor with a quick release, and it's good. Rodney Pryor. He will drain his second three-pointer of the night to make it 69-57. And just like that, the Sky Force have cut it to 12. And we've got a foul. No, he stepped on the sideline. As the Suns turn it over. And it's a 12-point game. And again, you look through the scoring summary, the Sky Force have rarely strung more than two straight possessions with buckets. Well, they can go for three here. Larry drew two. Jump pass over to Pryor. G in the corner. His three is in and out. And the rebound tipped off the floor. They say last touched by, and they're trying to mull it over, and they say Taylor touched it last. 
And the Suns will play it in, 9.26, showing on the clock in this third quarter. Gray gives up to Studeville, back to Gray. Gray advances, gets all the way in, no good. Taylor was there, did not block it, but affected it. Up ahead to Wamu. Wamu, he'll take it in the lane, loop it up, it's no good. And the rebound to the Suns. Here comes Gray again on a run. Here's Studeville. His shot is good. Hooks it up and scores. 71-57. Wamu controlling for Sioux Falls. Pulls up. Gives to G. G will drive, and he's fouled. He'll go to the line. I believe that's Peters who will be whistled for the foul. And Peters will pick up his third personal. He is the only one that that distinction so far in the game. A.J. Hammonds has two on the bench for Sioux Falls. Two for Larry Drew, two for the Sky Force. And two for Silas as the first free throw goes for Alonzo G. To make it 71-58 with 8.44 remaining. Alonzo G has been around. He's played multiple NBA seasons. In fact, eight of them. He hits both free throws. 12-point game again, 71-59. Ball lost out of bounds, but it was knocked out by Sioux Falls. And Gray will trigger it right of the hoop. Get it in. Silas off the cut. It's no good. And the rebound pulled down. It's a two-on-one the other way. Alonzo G to Wamu for the damn. One hand with the right. And Ike Wamu makes it a 10-point game, 71-61. See that one coming. Young. He will take it in the lane. Shoot it up over Taylor. No good. Rebound. Taylor pulls it down. And the Sky Force can cut it to single digits on this trip. Wamu thinking. Get to the free throw line. Sends to Pryor. Pryor for three. No. And the rebound on a hop for Peters. And Peters now up to six rebounds. And it's still a 10-point game as Silas sends it to Peters way out on the right. Studeville, 20 feet from the basket. Dribble handoff to Gray. Gray in the lane. Back to Studeville, who's loose. He'll score. 73-61. Drew two for Sioux Falls. Underhanded pass to Jimmy Taylor at the top. Prior, he'll fire another three. And that one is no good. Just a smidge off on that one. The previous one by Pryor was probably a little bit more off caliber. Gray looks at it from the left side off the pick. Picked up by G. Then he'll send it over to Young. Young is open for three. No. And the rebound to Drew, two. And we've got a timeout. And actually, that was probably a good thing as Drew, two. That pass might have been deflected. And the Sky Force call for time with 7.05 remaining in the third quarter. And it's the, Sioux, the Northern Arizona Sun, 73 in the Sioux Falls Sky Force 61. This is the NBA G League. Play NBA G League Fantasy now to win weekly and grand prizes, like a trip to NBA All-Star Weekend for free at nbagleague.com slash fantasy.
wherever you are enjoying this NBA G League contest, certainly glad that you're along tonight. I'm Dan Peters, and thanks to our crew, we're giving you the visions on Facebook Live with Kelsey, Brett, and Kirby doing a lot of the heavy lifting, and also our camera crew being able to give you those pictures, and also to Scott Davidson, who is manning the controls at Information 1000 KSOO this evening. In this third quarter, the Suns are 3 of 8 so far from the floor, while the Sky Force are 3 of 8 as well. But the Sky Force have hit two three-point baskets, which has helped them close within 12. Tony Mitchell has returned for Sioux Falls. Here's Larry Drew, two for three, and that one's off mark. And Silas will pull down the rebound for the Suns, rush at front court, and then try to set things up, gesturing with the right hand and then pounding with the left. They're trying to hit Alec Peters. Ball knocked off the floor by Alonzo G, knocking it away from behind. So Ike Wamu sitting for Sioux Falls, who's got 24. Relier Hollis Jefferson has also returned for the Suns. Like both teams going eight deep so far tonight. We have not seen the likes of Kadeem Jack for Sioux Falls yet tonight. Here comes a drive in the lane. It's no good, but Alec Peters is open. The three is no good. The rebound, Tony Mitchell able to secure it. And a one-handed pass. Rodney Pryor sends it back. Tony Mitchell, three, no good. Rebound, Taylor, and he'll put it back up, and he will blast it through the ten. Make it 73-63. Gray front court. And to Silas. Silas jab step, gives to Peters. Peters about 18 feet from the basket with G on his back. Gives back to Silas. Silas for three. Good. Xavier Silas. He's got 17. 76-63. And 540 left in the third quarter. As Mitchell, still with the rock, he will fire from there, and it's good. So back-to-back three-point shots on either side of the ledger. And it's a 10-point game again, 76-66. Gray rounds the curve, adds into the lane. He will float it up. It's short, and the rebound, Larry drew two. Three on three the other way. Alonzo G will pick up the pace. He will drive through, knifes in, score it, and he'll get one more. And the Sky Force trail by eight as Alonzo G hit from behind by Alec Peters. And Peters picks up his fourth. So the leading scorer for the Suns will hit the pine at 5.14 remaining in the third quarter. He's got four personals. No one else with three in the game. And Alonzo G can make it a seven-point game if he can get a make here. Still a three-possession game no matter how you slice it. And it's 76-69 after the G free throw, and he's got 11. 5-10 to go. Third quarter as Hollis Jefferson gives off to Shaquille Harrison, who's checked on. Tough shot in the lane, no good. Defended well by Alonzo G, and there's Mitchell to pick up the rebound. He's got five. Mitchell handling up top. Now will shift to the right. Pocket pass. Rodney Pryor met at the rim, and is, gets his own rebound, puts it up, missed it. And again, nice block by Harrison. And we've got a technical foul called, I believe, on the Sioux Falls Sky Force. as there was probably a bit of woofing. So that is, wait a minute, they call it on a member of the Suns. So the, they say Gervais Odom and Cody Topper. Actually, actually they switched that to Cody Topper. And the, now a six-point game, a two-possession game after they made free throw for Tony Mitchell, 76-70. Well, I don't know what Toppert was, was woofing about, but he got lit up. Maybe it was that call that was a jump, they wanted a jump ball or something. I don't know. Silas for three, no good. Rebound, 
off the back of Tony Mitchell. He tracks it down. As Young could not quite reel that one in either. So the Sky Force can cut it down. Here's Jimmy Taylor, Jimmy Taylor in the lane. Hook shot is good. And now they will call for time with 421 remaining. And Cody Toppert and company of the Northern Arizona Suns will talk things over as will the Sioux Falls Sky Force. The score with 421 remaining left in the third quarter. Northern Arizona 76, Sioux Falls 72. This is the NBA G League. Welcome to NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and this is Trending. Let's shine a light on some of the best big men that have been assigned to the NBA G League from their NBA affiliates. How about Damian Jones? He's been wreaking havoc on the rims across the NBA G League. Jones has rounded out his game with the Santa Cruz Warriors after being Golden State's first round pick in 2016. Through the early part of the season, Jones is putting up over 16 points a game and eight rebounds. At 7-1, Joe Chi was drafted out of China by the Houston Rockets in 2016. But he arrived this season and has been developing his game with the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. Strong in the paint, Chi is filling up the stat sheet with just over 10 points, five rebounds, and three blocks a game. And he's even got some three-point range. Another impressive big man, Justin Patton. He broke his foot over the summer after being acquired by the Minnesota Timberwolves in the draft. The first round pick out of Creighton has worked his game back into shape this year with the Iowa Wolves. In his NBA G League debut in early December, Patton scored 15 points and pulled down seven rebounds and turned away four shots in just 16 minutes of work. Highly efficient. Thomas Bryant has been a force with the South Bay Lakers. After being drafted as a second round pick by the Los Angeles Lakers, the 20 year old out of Indiana has been spectacular for South Bay. Brian is pouring in just over 22 points and seven rebounds a game while punching the clock for about 30 minutes a night. Thanks for watching NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and we'll see you next time. Welcome back to the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, as the Northern Arizona Suns once led by 18 points. In this quarter, in fact, it was 71 to 57, and actually it was, let's see, the 18 point lead I can verify, 67 to 49. That was at the end of the second quarter. Now it's a four point game. The Suns with the ball. And the Sky Force have outscored the Suns in this portion of the ball game as Shaquille Harrison from the top gets into the lane, sends it out. Relier Hollis Jefferson, he will advance. Tough shot, did not make it. And it was Alonzo G with the foul, and that will be his second. So it's a 13 to five run for Sioux Falls to close to within four points. And Jefferson, Hollis Jefferson at the line. He was one of two in his previous attempts at the line. Hits the first here. And Hollis Jefferson with his fifth point of the night. Leading the way for the Sky Force is Ike Wamu, who's got 24. And Alec Peters also matching him with the 24. And that one is good for Hollis Jefferson to make it 78-72. Tony Mitchell will lead the charge on this possession. Three for Wamu. Yes, again for Ike Wamu, and he's got 27. Cuts the lead in half to make it 78 to 75. And the Suns with Gray to the lane. That one blocked by Taylor. Rebound by Mitchell. And Mitchell will jog the other direction. Give it off for Wamu. Wamu ball fake will step back. Now he'll ask for the screen with 13 to shoot. Lost it. And the ball stolen by Jock. And they're going to say offensive foul as Jock pushed off as Alonzo G came to close on him and tried to knock it away. So it's still a one possession game. The Sky Force can tie it on this trip. Three sixteen remaining in the third quarter as Jimmy Taylor will head to the bench. Taylor with a couple of blocks. Pryor with a couple of blocks. A.J. Hammond's off the bench with three blocks. 
Hammonds is on now. So the seven-footer from Purdue in the lineup. G into a double team. He's sandwiched, and he has to cut it loose to Drew Two. His jumper, two-pointer, no. And the rebound, and pulled down by the Suns. They'll come the other direction. Hollis Jefferson, and they'll back away instead of advancing. Young on the left. Couple of dribbles. He'll step back instead. We'll get it over to Harrison. And Harrison rolls the pass to Studeville. Studeville a dribble to Peter Jock for three, and it's off the back iron. And the rebound, Young had it, lost it, and the rebound to the Sky Force. Wamu to Drew. Back to Wamu, a 25-footer for the tie. No. And the rebound, there's a collision, and coming out of it is the Suns, but then they lose it. Other direction, Wamu, touch pass, Mitchell for the tie. No. And the rebound, G knocks it out of bounds. All he could do was reach up his hand, knock it with the fist, and no one over there to get it. it goes out of bounds. And both teams have been a little bit more stingy defensively in this third quarter. The Suns are now at 43%, and the Sky Force are at 42% for the game. Into the lane, Harrison. He'll drive on. Hammonds, no good. He'll get his own rebound. Did not touch rim. Actually, did touch rim. And that one, no good from the corner. And Wamu, he is going to weave his way front court. Larry drew two. Into trouble. He'll back out. Keeps it on the left. Pounding it with 14 on the shot clock. And the wait for Wamu to spring free. And that one out of bounds. No, no. Saved by the Suns. Here comes earlier Hollis Jefferson. And he got the layup. And it's 80-75. to 75. 133 remaining in the period. Alonzo G will drive, and he will score. Off the nice feed from Larry Drew, too. Harrison thought about it, backs away. Earlier, Hollis Jefferson, he thought about it, too. Young gets to the free throw line. He will jump it from there. It is good. As Mike Young with 10 points. And it's 82-77. Still a five-point game. Final minute, third quarter. As Drew Two, sandwiched between two defenders, goes to a knee, gives it up to Alonzo G, to Hammonds. Hammonds' shot is good in the lane. And it's 82-79. 50 seconds left as Harrison is going to drive the lane. And they'll call the foul as Harrison got into the body of A.J. Hammonds. That will be number three on A.J., Either that, yep. Oh, and Tony Mitchell. You could see on the replay that he got all ball. He did. But A.J. Hammond's got some body in there. And Harrison, this will be his first free throw attempts of the night. And the lefty's first. Nothing but the bottom. On the season. For Harrison, he is a 67% free throw shooter. And pushes the lead to four. And Harrison, the second, is good again. 47.6 remaining in the period. Again, five-point spread as Mitchell. Here comes G into the lane, puts on the brakes, lost the handle, got it back. There's Wamu in the lane. His shot, shooter's roll, no. And then the ball is loose on the floor. And then Studeville lost it, and G gets it back. Mitchell, 4-3. It's way off. And with 21 seconds left in the period, the Suns can play for the last shot. Harrison, way out on the left with 12. With 9. Harrison with 7. Harrison with 6. 5. Studeville will drive and he will flip it up. No good, but he will go to the line with 2.5 left in the period. Studeville's got a couple of buckets. This will be his first free throw attempts of the night. And Studeville on the season, a 78% free throw shooter as the 6'11 center out of Sacramento State heads to the line. And two dribbles, releases, and hits the first to make it 85 79. And again, the Suns led by as many as 18, but most likely a single digit 
margin as we head to the fourth quarter. Three at the buzzer for Mitchell. Yes! They'll look at it, but that one was a beat the red shot as the LED lights did not come to life until after the release from Tony Mitchell. And the score, 86-82, as the Northern Arizona Suns lead the Sioux Falls Sky Force by four. Back with the fourth quarter. After this, this is the NBA G League. Welcome to NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and this is Rewind. Now, we have some absolutely incredible plays that we're about to put in the playback machine. A ski of Booker in Northern Arizona makes the bounce pass through the legs of the defender, Anthony Bennett with the earth-shattering dunk. Terrence Ferguson, on assignment from the Oklahoma City Thunder, provides a little of his own. It's in showtime for Terrence, and he follows it down. Joel Ballenboy, a two-way player of the Milwaukee Bucks, goes baseline. Ballenboy throws it down. Perry Jones of the Iowa Wolves with the one-handed stick. And how about the Westchester Knicks working the long distance alley-oop? Isaiah Hicks with the finish. Thanks for watching NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and we'll see you next time. Well, a gracious good evening to you as the Sioux Falls Sky Force and Northern Arizona Suns. As the crowd here trying to get into the spirit of the season. Not even a Santa hat or two out there yet here at the Sanford Pentagon tonight. The Northern Arizona Suns, the Sky Force outscored the Suns 31 to 19 in that third quarter. And that is courtesy of Six of 20 shooting for the Suns. Wow, the Sky Force picked it up quite a bit. They were 11 of 25, including five of 14 from downtown. They shot up a lot of three-pointers in that quarter, but it's more than the Suns did. We're there, Hollis Jefferson has it, gives up to Peter Jock. It's a three, it's no good, rebound. It's Harrison who pulls it down and a 13 seconds remaining to shoot as Harrison goes in and we've got a stoppage in play. And a foul, a hold on Rodney Pryor. And so the shot clock will cycle back to 14. Peters posting up against Pryor. And a couple of ball fakes, drop step, good. Alec Peters with 26, and it's 88-82. Suns have scored first in each period. Mitchell sends it back out. Drew two for three, short. And the rebound pulled down by Pryor as it went way out on a long carom to him. A.J. Hammonds, quick move, hook shot, shh, too strong. And the rebound to the Suns. Still a six-point game, first minute gone by in this final frame. Harrison over to Riller Hollis Jefferson, who's open for three. And shooters roll no, pulled down by Pryor on another board. Pryor lobbed to Hammonds, and the misconnection as Pryor thought Hammonds was breaking for the basket, and Hammonds was momentum shifting him the other direction away from the hoop. It's turnover number 17 on the Sky Force. And that is a place where they were able to clean things up in the third quarter. They only committed three turnovers in that period. A.J. Hammonds sent that one almost into the, into the bat cave. Sent that one into next week. Still a six-point game as the Suns play it in. Silas works his way into the lane, and he will jam it down with two hands. Lane was wide open. Silas knew of it. He heard tell of that open lane. 80 to 90 to 82. And on the other end, 
a rim rejection as Tony Mitchell explodes the hole and then missed his dunk attempt. Relier Hollis Jefferson in the lane. His layup is good. And the Sky Force surrender the first six points of this fourth quarter. And it's a 10-point game, 92-82, to 82, with 10-11 remaining in the contest. Northern Arizona Suns lead it by 10. Back after this, this is the NBA G League. Look at this. We got fancy graphics. We got a sponsor. Sanford Pentagon as the fourth quarter. Not quite two minutes in, but the Sky Force want to correct a defensive lapse as they were surrendering six straight points to start the quarter. It was an 86-82 Northern Arizona lead. But now it has swelled to 10 as Hollis Jefferson's bucket and Xavier Silas's bucket, probably the most two egregious examples of the Sky Force not protecting the rim. Now that's 34 points in the paint for the Suns. Sky Force have 26. 10 to shoot as Mitchell will jump for three. No good. And the rebound to Peter Jock. 9.45 in ticking. As the Suns can stretch their lead further on this trip, Silas is open for three, and it's no good. And the rebound pulled down by Mitchell. Mitchell, the other direction, sends to Larry Drew, too, who will advance. Lost the ball. They'll say that was a foul, and Alec Peters was probably the most in protest, and that's his fifth. No wonder. So will he stay on? No, it looks like the brain trust for the Northern Arizona Suns will make a move to put Peters on the bench and save him for the final stages if needed. And the first toss for Drew, two is no good. Drew, two's got four assists, as does Tony Mitchell so far in the contest. Drew's got 12. Misses the first. And misses the second, and the rebound tracked down by Peter Jock. And 9.23 remains. And the Sky Force still scoreless in this fourth quarter. And we're just about to the first three minutes played as Harrison to Gray to Peter Jock. He'll drive the lane, and then the ball knocked off the floor by Alonzo G with five to shoot. So they'll send it in on the baseline near the left corner. Gray looking, looking. Now will bounce it in. Hollis Jefferson, and with two to shoot, Hollis Jefferson forces it up at the buzzer, and he's fouled by A.J. Hammonds, who, of course, protests. But it will go to no avail, and Hammonds will pick up his fifth. And Jimmy Taylor will enter for the Sky Force after this first free throw. 
And Relier Hollis Jefferson, three of four so far from the line tonight. Now with 11 points as he hits the first toss. Xavier Silas with 19. Alec Peters with 23. And then you got Harrison and Young both with 10. Now 12 as the second one goes for Hollis Jefferson to make it 94-82. The lead is 12, and the Sky Force still scoreless in this fourth quarter. Drew two, gives over to Alonzo G. G and Drew play catch. G makes his move, gives back to Drew. Drew with seven to shoot, and we've called for steps. And that's turnover number 18. So another empty trip for the Sky Force. And the Suns have scored eight straight to begin this period. Young, a couple of dribbles, off to Silas. Silas will spin, he will get to the hole, he will lay it up and in. Did have to adjust in the air just a little bit, but that was a nice shot for Silas, who's got 21. Drew two. Over to Mitchell, Ikwamu is checked back on. He's got a three, and that one's short, but he'll get tracked down his own rebound, and they'll re-rack. Kwamu will try again. He did not make the adjustment. And it's still a 14-point lead, 96-82. The Sky Force still without a score. First four minutes of action in the period, and a hook shot up and in for Young to make it 98-82. Ball knocked off the floor by Josh Gray. And the lead has swelled to 16. So after a productive third quarter, the Sky Force have been drawing blanks here in the fourth. Wamu near the top, dribbles his way through, hands off to Jimmy Taylor, who works his way in the lane. He is fouled. He will go to the line. The Sky Force in this quarter turned it over twice. And they are only, they have only shot three times from the floor. Two free throw attempts. And Taylor with the third free throw attempt of the quarter. And that one's no good. So the Sky Force are still scoreless at the 741 mark of the fourth. And Jimmy Taylor's got one more chance to crack the code here in the fourth. And Taylor, a couple of dribbles, releases, and he does find the bottom. It's 98-83. Well, that's a 10 straight to start the quarter for the Suns. Now a 15-point game. Into the lane, Silas. He'll send it back out. Young, now to Harrison. Harrison in the lane. Sends over to Young. Young, 20, or excuse me, 14-footer is good. Right side of the lane to make it 100 to 83. Mitchell to Taylor, back to Mitchell. And we've got a foul as Harrison goes for the grab outside. And Harrison will pick up his third. And I'll take this one from the side. As Wamu triggers it. Work with the screen up top. Sends it over to Rodney Pryor. Back to Wamu with seven to shoot. Wamu assesses his options, finds Pryor. The three, it is good. And Rodney Pryor makes it 100 to 86. 649 remaining in the fourth. And here's a three on the other end. Hollis Jefferson, no. And the rebound pops back to him. He'll send it to Young. Young into the lane. Sends it around Silas. He'll try for three. That one's off the back iron. Rebound Alonzo G. And G will take it front court. And then Jimmy Taylor. That one off of Taylor out of bounds, they say. Say it was deflected off of Taylor. He tried to lob that one up, but there was too much air underneath it. And the Suns were able to deflect it. And then it glanced off of Taylor. Hollis Jefferson gives to Gray. Young left of the lane. 
Now to Gray. Gray right side three short. And the rebound ripped away as it got poked from Tony Mitchell. And the Suns will get a full 24 seconds if they elect to use it. No, they won't. It'll be a layup for Shaq Harrison to make it 102-86. Harrison with 12. On the other end, Alonzo G. He will make it all the way in, score it. He's got 15 on the night. For the Suns, it's Gray, and he was bumped by Pryor. And that is the third team foul on the Sky Force. Both teams with that distinction so far in the fourth quarter. 5-4 remaining in the period. And the Suns, a 14-point lead. Sky Force have some work to do. Hollis Jefferson, way out on the right. Gives it up to Young. Back to Hollis Jefferson. Pump fake, lost it, got it back. Now he will take it in the lane, and Taylor says, no, no. But then he gets it back, hooks it up, and scores. Hollis Jefferson sticks with it. Give it up for Relier, Hollis Jefferson. On the other end, Alonzo G. He will drive and he will score again. The Suns will be content to do that for the rest of the game. Trade baskets, 5.09 remaining as Gray gets into the lane and then gives it off to Young. Young gets up and scores it in close, 106-90. And Young with 16. A two-way contract man from the Wizards. And then Alonzo G was sandwiched. He's fouled. And that's team foul four on the Suns. And Hollis Jefferson will pick up his second. We'll take this one from the side. The penalty will be in place for the rest of the game on any subsequent Suns team foul. And that one knocked off the floor. Mike Wamu tried to get it in. Tried to feed Mitchell, but Silas sent it away. And now they get it into Mitchell. Mitchell will drive the baseline. He will send it down. That one, I think there was some frustration involved. Tony Mitchell with 11. 106-92. As Hollis Jefferson... Gives it up to Gray. And what do we have here? A whistle. And they will whistle that foul on Pryor. And Pryor will pick up his third. And that is the last foul to give for Sioux Falls. 14-point game with 4.30 remaining. Not out of reach. But the Suns, if they keep scoring baskets, they'll put this one in their hip pocket. Five to shoot. And really, Hollis Jefferson will put it up. Rebound one-handed. Grab by Tony Mitchell. And the Sky Force come front court. He'll pound it on the right. One-handed pass to Rodney Pryor. He'll step into a three. Good for Rodney Pryor, who's got 15. And it's 106-95. 3.55 to go. Gray into the lane. His floater no good. Rebound, Tony Mitchell on the run. He's got Ike Wamu, who can't handle the pass. We'll get it back to Mitchell. Still plenty of time to work. And Mitchell swats away the fireflies, and now we'll set it up in south. Lonzo G gets in the lane. His short, and then he'll get his own rebound. Sky Force still with an opportunity. Step into it for Rodney Pryor. He hits again. And it's 106-98. Back-to-back threes for Rodney Pryor to make it an eight-point game. Timeout on the court as the Suns want to talk it over. 106-98. Northern Arizona leads Sioux Falls with 323 remaining. This is the NBA G League. There's a reason this season can't come soon enough. Why NBA history is always being rewritten. And why this game is about more than just basketball. There's a reason this fall is going to be hotter than the summer. Why two seconds can feel like an eternity. And why any city can become the center of the universe.
course, have scored the last eight to cut the lead in half. But one thing that the Sky Force can be can be wistful of in this final goings, 20 turnovers, which has led to 26 Northern Arizona points. So if you want to have a facet of the game that has let Sioux Falls down as being respectful of the Orange. Back to action as the Suns playing to the basket on my left. Alec Peters is checked back on. And he will hand off to Silas. Silas sandwiched between two defenders. Contact. And the foul on Sioux Falls. And Alonzo G will pick up his third. And Silas to the free throw line. And again, Silas, one of the better free throwers in the G League. And again, has missed three of his four free throws so far tonight, but this is when they count. And the first one gets through. So we can make it a 10 point game with another make. Make it a four possession contest with 3.11 left in the contest. Down it goes, 108 to 98. So the eight straight for the Sky Force snapped. Tony Mitchell dribbles off to Rodney Pryor and they'll run the weave up top with G. Then Pryor on the left, nine to shoot. Pryor floats it up, bangs it off the glass and in. 2.45 left. Peters between the rings. Gets the screen. Then sends it off to Harrison. Harrison drives Taylor. Sends it off. Gray. Three. No. Rebound. Jimmy Taylor pulls it down. Secures it. And 2.30 remaining. As Mitchell. He will advance to the hole. Yes, sir. And count that basket. And he'll score in one more as Tony Mitchell drives all the way in and gets the contact from Young. So the Sky Force get consecutive buckets, closed within six. So he can get to a five-point game with a make, and it does, 108-103 with 2.25 to go. Mitchell with 14 off the bench tonight with 12 rebounds and seven assists. That from a man who they thought may not be able to give him a whole lot tonight. And there's a reverse layup, no good. Ball sent away, and the Sky Force the other direction, three on two with Mitchell. And the ball stolen away by the Suns. Two minutes left in the ball game. As Gray, settle it down. 16 to shoot. As Gray. Works it to the top, works on Taylor, gets to him, no, and the rebound, Mitchell. And now another break opportunity, and Mitchell gets into the lane, puts it up, oh yes, and a foul. And Mitchell has brought the Sky Force to within three points with the make. And Harrison on the body contact, and Harrison picks up his fourth. So the Sky Force have outscored the Suns 15 to 2. 16 to 2. 108, 106, 135 to go. This is getting good, gang. Hollis Jefferson back on for the Suns. Hands off to Harrison. Harrison will back away. Harrison over to Gray. Gray into the lane. Gray to the corner, then to Harrison from the wing for three, and it's no good. Rebound, Sky Force. Ike Wamu will take it the other direction, and then elects not to take it all the way in. Sky Force will work on this possession. 1-10 to go. Mitchell way out on the left. Here's the screen, and Mitchell will drive. He will take it, and it rolls off, and then Taylor comes up with the rebound, and it's stripped away. And the Suns come up with it with 55 seconds remaining. Suns the basketball. Gray will take it all the way in, and no good. Taylor on the block. Skyforce the other direction. 42 seconds left. 
Alonzo G is down low, and he's fouled. He can tie it at the line. 38.1 left. Nice bounce pass inside to Alonzo G from Rodney Pryor. Setting up this two-shot opportunity. And it looks like Alonzo G waiting patiently for a couple of Skyforce mates to join him around the painted area. G tonight is 5 of 9 from the free throw line. He has 17 points. The first. Good. Now we await free throw number two. 38.1 seconds in the ball game. The Sky Force looking to tie for the first time since it was eight to eight. Yes. So we're at 108-108. And the Suns have it. 30 seconds left. Hollis Jefferson. And the ball knocked away. And it goes into backcourt. 10 to shoot. Hollis Jefferson. Back to Silas. 4-3. And it is no good. It's a glass banger. And the Sky Force will call for time and set up a final play with 16.4 seconds left. And a chance to get the win. And I was in error. It was tied at one time at 8-8. But the Sky Force did lead at 16-11. But the last tie, it was 19-19. When the Suns went on their run to end the first quarter, which they led 32 to 28, outscored the Sioux Falls Sky Force in quarter number two, 25, 35 to 23, to take a 67-51 lead into half. The Sky Force closed within four at the end of the third quarter. Then the Suns scored eight straight to begin Actually, 10 straight, 12 straight to begin that fourth quarter. But the Sky Force have been stingy in this final portion of the game. And with 16.4 seconds left, it's tied at 108. The Sky Force will deploy Rodney Pryor, Alonzo G, Jimmy Taylor, Ike Wamu, and Tony Mitchell. It's Alec Peters. Xavier Silas, Josh Gray, Rylier, Hollis Jefferson, and Shaquille Harrison. Tony Mitchell with eight seconds left. Tony Mitchell spins, free throw line, drives, and it's short, and he's fouled with 2.9 left. I think the Suns are going to want to review this because Mitchell gets all the way in. Rylier Hollis Jefferson claiming that he did not foul Tony Mitchell, but there's Needs to be incontrovertible evidence to be able to overturn a call like that. And still with 2.9 seconds left, it's either free throws for Tony Mitchell or it's a jump ball. So we'll see how this plays out. And again, these two teams will lock horns one more time, actually two more times in consecutive nights in late March at the end of the season. The Suns, their next upcoming game will be a long road trip. And in fact, they've had quite a few contests on the road recently. They just got done with at Iowa, at Texas, at Oklahoma City before facing the Blue at home on the 22nd. After tonight, they'll play New Year's Eve at Memphis to face the hustle for a matinee. Then they'll be at Rio Grande Valley, then at Reno. Then they got to fly all the way back east to face the Erie Bayhawks before the Suns return home to face the Canton Charge on January 12th. Sioux Falls, they've got their next contest here at the Pentagon on New Year's Eve against Oklahoma City. It is a foul. Mitchell for the lead. Yes. To make it 109-108. And to extend it to a two-point game. And it goes off the bid, the rack backboard and the rim. Time ticks off, and it's 2.1 remaining. So that must have been that must have been the method of operation is to 
ram it hard off the glass, off the rim. Tick time away. So 2.1 left. The Suns, they can get this final shot. Gray will trigger it. Gray looking, looking, and they'll lob it to the rim. And it goes in. And that's a turnover. That exact same thing happened at Oklahoma City. And that is a turnover. That went, went straight into the bucket off the lob. And that would be a turnover. Because I don't think that was ever touched. That one went straight in. And if it did get touched, that would be basket interference. It's Sky Force basketball. Are they going to replay this? No, it will be Sky Force basketball. That is an inbound violation. And again, the exact same thing happened at Oklahoma City. The Blue tried to do the same thing to the Sky Force, and the ball went in the basket. That is absolutely incredible that it would happen twice in the same season. Let me reset that one for you. That was on December 13th at Oklahoma City. The Sky Force were leading by two, 121 to 119. And that was with 1.1 seconds left in that contest. The ball flung toward the basket and it went in as someone got loose for the lob. That is something that I had not seen in a game prior to that and it's happened twice within the span of just over two and a half weeks. So the clock reads 2.1 seconds remaining. The Sky Force will need to get it in. And most likely the Suns will need to foul quickly. What the Sky Force should just do, just lob it up, a jump ball near their own end, tip it in the air. And then this game will be over. Larry Drew, too, is checked back on, and he will inbound. The Sky Force look to get it in. They do, and it's knocked out of bounds with 1.5 remaining. And the Sky Force, no, they'll call a foul. And Tony Mitchell will be at the line with 1.5. This is where you will need. So that's, pr- that's a pretty good savvy move for the Suns as Mitchell was receiving the pass and was fouled in the process, letting six-tenths of a second tick off. So this, to extend it to two points, no. So it's still a one-point game with 1.5 seconds remaining. Will he do the same thing again? No, he'll play it straight up and hit the shot. So the Suns still have life. It's a two-point ball game with 1.5 seconds remaining. So this game not nearly over. As we're still determining a victor in this one. Well, let's take an opportunity to let our stations identify themselves. This is the NBA G League. This 1.5 seconds will be crucial on either way. The Suns and the Sky Force. Will it determine a victory or an overtime for one or the other? Or both, considering overtime. And Xavier Silas is not exactly in bounds. There, uh, okay, there, now they'll... Now it'll be out of bounds. They'll get it in. Jimmy Taylor will guard Silas on the inbound. And it gets to the rim. It's up, and it's good, and there's a foul. Count the basket. And the Suns can win it with a free throw.
amazing as they got Shaquille Harrison and Tony Mitchell meeting underneath. Count the basket. There was contact, and Shaquille Harrison could win it with a free throw. 14 points for Harrison. And actually, they put four-tenths of a second back on the clock. So we're still not done. So here's Harrison to put Northern Arizona in the lead. And Harrison, the lefty, will put it up. No good! And it's no good! Alec Peters with a turnaround attempt at the buzzer, knocked away by Mitchell, and we're going to overtime. Wow! Two minutes in an overtime, and we're going to have a little extra basketball on the bonus side. So, here's where we stand. After 48 minutes of basketball, Alec Peters, 26 points to lead the Northern Arizona Suns. Ike Wamu, 27 for the Sky Force. But you'd have to say that it was the Tony Mitchell fourth quarter that really put the Sky Force in the position to have any chance at all in this one. It was 106 to 90, and the Sky Force outscored the Suns 20 to 4 to send it to overtime and actually had the lead. 1.5 seconds left, and a missed free throw by Shaquille Harrison extends this game. There's 2,373 people here at the Sanford Pentagon. We're getting a little more than they bargained for. The Sky Force are shooting 38 of 84 for the game. 41 of 99 for the Suns. So they have dropped to 42, 41% for the game. And the Sky Force, 45% for the game. 16 of 42 from downtown for the Sky Force. 15 of 44 for the Suns. 18 of 28 from the line for Sioux Falls. 13 of 18 for the Suns. As we get ready for the extra session. And again, this is a new rule this year. The, Scott, the NBA G League allows just for a two-minute overtime period. Last year, it was a three-minute overtime period. And in the NBA, it is a five-minute overtime period. In fact, college, it's also in, that is also the case. And we'll go to center circle as the Northern Arizona Suns and the Sioux Falls Sky Force all square with two more minutes to go. The Sky Force have played one other overtime game. That was a loss to the South Bay Lakers on December the 8th. And the tip is won by Sioux Falls. Tony Mitchell comes away with the loose ball. The Suns have played a few overtime games. Ike Wamu with a ball fake. Plenty of time to shoot. Gets it down low. Jimmy Taylor. He shimmy shakes. Hook shot is good. Jimmy Taylor. And the Sky Force lead it. And for the first time, they start a period or a session and score first. Relier Hollis Jefferson gives off to Gray. Gray Sizes up, 10 to shoot. Harrison, he'll get in the lane, sends it out. Hollis Jefferson, corner three. It's good. And the Suns get the lead, 113 to 112, and 120 left in overtime. Tony Mitchell. 
with 14 to shoot. Alone on the right side with only one man with him. Nine to shoot. Backing down. Free throw line jumper. Good. And Tony Mitchell makes it 114-113 with one minute remaining. Boy, those possessions go by quick here in overtime. Harrison over to Silas. And Silas gets the screen, gets to the free throw line. Step back jumper is no good. And the rebound out of bounds to the Suns. They say last touched by Pryor. So 14 seconds to shoot. Skyforce lead at 114 to 113 with 47.2 remaining. Each team gets two, tur- two timeouts in overtime, and Nevada Smith and the Sioux Falls Sky Force will use one. And actually, that will be a official review, too. So they will look at this one. Well, you might as well use it. And, of course, the Sky Force will take this opportunity to try to work through the final 47.2. So the officials will look at it. I see what I see on Facebook Live. So Ike Wamu and Ralear Hollis Jefferson go after it. Did Pryor touch it? And Pryor, oh, there's Pryor. It's in his hands. Yes, Pryor did touch it last. That's a good call. Because Ralear Hollis Jefferson tipped it forced the momentum out of bounds, but Pryor's hands were on the ball. And he touched it last, so that is a good call. I think that will be sustained. But again, for the Skyforce side of things, you got that coach's challenge. You may as well use it. But it will be Northern Arizona Suns ball in all likelihood with 47.2 seconds left and 14 on the shot clock. So it's a one-point Sioux Falls Sky Force lead, 114 to 113. And here come the Purple Five with Peters, Silas, Gray, Hollis, Jefferson, and Harrison. And their purple-clad uniforms with the orange stripes, along with gray stripes down the side, outlining the orange. Gray to send it in, and he'll get it in to Hollis Jefferson, and the clock resumes. Gray are off the screen and roll, free throw line jumper short, and the rebound, the Suns get it again. Harrison, now with 10 to shoot, and now timeout called by the Suns, and Cody Toppert and company want to sort through this final 32.4 seconds. In the, ga- in the overtime and nine seconds to operate in the offensive possession. And again, the Sky Force will be back here New Year's Eve against Oklahoma City. Then they'll face the South Bay Lakers on January the 2nd. Then they'll have the Agua Contiente Clippers on the 7th here at home with a Friday date in Iowa sandwiched in between. And then they're going to be on the road for a stretch for a good portion of January. But their focus right now is this final 32.4 seconds, leading by one. Tony Mitchell with a jumper to make it 114 to 113. Sky Force have put two buckets on the board, one long one for the Suns. And they get it in with nine to shoot. Silas to Gray. Gray, way out on the right. Silas, turn around, three, and it's no good. It misses everything. And the shot clock expires with 23.3. They may adjust that just a little bit. But the Sky Force have a one-point lead. And most likely, the Suns will have to foul. Larry Drew, two, will come back on. And he will replace Jimmy Taylor. 23.9. So the shot clock is off. And the Sky Force will reset. They will not huddle. They will just make the substitution, Jimmy Taylor, and they will inbound it near the hash, right in proximity of Cody Toppert and the edge of the scorer's table. Larry Drew, two, finds his man, Wamu. 
And Wamu with 20 seconds. He can hold it if he can. Oh, he lost it. And we have a loose ball foul. Is it on the Suns? I believe it is. Who is it on? The officials will talk this one over with 16.8 seconds left. I, I'm almost certain that this was going to be on the Sky Force. But it is a crucial call. And it would be the first foul within the last two minutes. So that would be not a shooting foul, and it will be on the Sky Force and the timeout for the Suns with 16.8 left. So Wamu lost the ball, then a foul was committed on Wamu, and Wamu will pick up his second. It is the first foul in the first first foul in the overtime. It was a non-shooting foul. The Suns will be able to inbound with 16.8 left. So they have a one-point deficit to the Suns. And the Sky Force looking to prevent Northern Arizona from getting a good look. So the Sky Force will adjust their lineup. Drew Two goes out. Jimmy Taylor comes back on. Along with Pryor, G, Wamu, and Mitchell. It's Peters, Silas Gray, Hollis Jefferson, and Harrison. Harrison, the trigger man. He is on the right hash. Gets it into Gray. And Gray gets it over to Silas. Silas works it. Right side. Gray is open. He'll fire the three. And it is good with 7.4 remaining. 116 to 114. As the Northern Arizona Suns work three for two. As the two Skyforce buckets of the two-point variety. While the two buckets for Northern Arizona of the three-point variety. And Josh Gray was wide open as the Sky Force missed an assignment. And Gray makes the Sky Force pay. Gray with 12, along with 14 assists. And now the Sky Force have 7.4 seconds left to determine the outcome of this contest. Either a Northern Arizona win, a Sky Force lead, or win, or another overtime. Larry Drew two returns, and Jimmy Taylor is out. And it's Peters, Silas Gray, Hollis Jefferson, and Harrison. The same five for the Suns. And Drew two gets it in. Alonzo G is going to drive, and they're going to foul him with 5.7 left. So that's the first foul in the overtime for the Suns. And the Sky Force will have to do it again. And that is the fifth foul on Alec Peters. So he will sit with 26 points. He will be replaced by Mike Young. Five point seven remains. Northern Arizona leads it by two. Wamu the trigger. Trying to hit Mitchell. No, he'll find G instead. Wamu with three seconds. He will fire it up. It's a three. It's blocked. Oh, he's fouled. Wamu is fouled, and he has three free throws with nine tenths of a second left. And he was fouled by Harrison. And Harrison has fouled out. How many different subplots can play out in this game? It is mind-boggling, to say the least, as Ike Wamu will shoot three free throws. Nine-tenths of a second on the clock. 
Ike Wamu as a free throw shooter, which I knew you were wondering. He has 86% from the line this season. Tonight, Wamu has not shot any. We'll get the official figure as Ike Wamu. Free throw shooting. 23, excuse me, 36 of 42. The first is up. Yes. It's a one-point game. Wamu, the second. Ball on his hip. He dribbles once. Fires. Good. It's tied at 116. For the lead, Ike Wamu. One free throw. Ball on his hip, spins it in his hand, dribbles once, fires. It's no good. And the Suns rebound it. They wanted a timeout. They say they will get time put back on the clock, but very little. It was nine-tenths of a second. They will say six-tenths. And it will be a reset timeout. And so we're still not done. Will it be double overtime? Will it be a Suns victory? Josh Gray will send it in. And Jimmy Taylor will oppose. And they get it up. It's in Young. It's up at the buzzer. No good. We're going to another overtime. And because we can, let's take a break. As the Sioux Falls Sky Force and Northern Arizona Suns will play to another two-minute duel. And we'll talk about it in just a moment. This is the NBA G League. Welcome to NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and this is Trending. Let's shine a light on some of the best big men that have been assigned to the NBA G League from their NBA affiliates. How about Damian Jones? He's been wreaking havoc on the rims across the NBA G League. Jones has rounded out his game with the Santa Cruz Warriors after being Golden State's first-round pick in 2016. Through the early part of the season, Jones is putting up over 16 points a game and eight rebounds. At 7-1, Joe Chi was drafted out of China by the Houston Rockets in 2016. But he arrived this season and has been developing his game with the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. Strong in the paint, Chi is filling up the stat sheet with just over 10 points, five rebounds, and three blocks a game. And he's even got some three-point range. Another impressive big man, Justin Patton. He broke his foot over the summer after being acquired by the Minnesota Timberwolves in the draft. The first round pick out of Creighton has worked his game back into shape this year with the Iowa Wolves. In his NBA G League debut in early December, Patton scored 15 points and pulled down seven rebounds and turned away four shots in just 16 minutes of work. Highly efficient. Thomas Bryant has been a force with the South Bay Lakers. After being drafted as a second round pick by the Los Angeles Lakers, the 20 year old out of Indiana has been spectacular for South Bay. Brian is scoring in just over 22 points and seven rebounds a game while punching the clock for about 30 minutes a night. Thanks for watching NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and we'll see you next time. One sixteen, one sixteen. Here we go again. G sends it up top. Wamu, Wamu drives it stripped away. Taylor comes up with it, and. We got a foul, I do believe. And of course, that's the first foul in the overtime. And then anything else is going to be the penalty. Jimmy Taylor, who got the first points in the first overtime for Sioux Falls, has a chance to do so here in the second. And Taylor with 11 so far tonight. And Taylor, if he hits a pair, that will be his career high. The young man strokes the first and hits it. And we await the second for Taylor, the left-hander out of Alabama. One of the better shot blockers, top six all time 
in Alabama history. Drains a pair, and that's a career high for Jimmy Taylor, 118-160. Suns the other way. Relier Hollis Jefferson at the top, trying to find a man. Here's Gray. Gray will set him up. And then Gray will take it in the lane and then hands it off. It's Young, in and out, no good. Gray gets it back. Ball is not free, and we've got a jump ball as Young and Taylor scramble for it with 11 to shoot and 120 left in the contest in, oh, in the second overtime. I shouldn't say in the contest. In... <laughs> we could be here till Sunday rises the way this is going. So it's Young against Taylor. Taylor is 6'10". Young is 6'9". And the ball into backcourt. And they say it's an over and back as Gray touched it. Into backcourt. And of course, the ball was knocked into backcourt. So Taylor touched it. Gray got it. Oh, yes, he touched it, and it went into backcourt. That's a good call. Went across the line. Skyforce lead it by two, 118-116. G has the ball ripped away. Here comes Xavier Silas. Drives the lane, and they're calling an offensive foul as he pushed off on Ike Wamu and also Tony Mitchell. And, wow. Yep, they will now officially give the offensive foul on Xavier Silas. And that turnover, that is number 24 on the Sky Force tonight. But they do get it back off a turnover the other way, which is number 17 for the Suns. So again, a two-point game. Alonzo G will drive, and he'll flip it up. It's no good. And the rebound, Tony Mitchell. Sky Force with 13 to shoot. Now 50 seconds left. Mitchell, working clock. Now will dribble. Six to shoot. Mitchell, and he'll flip it up. It's off the iron, no good. Another offensive rebound for Sioux Falls. Alonzo G has it stolen away. It's Gray coming out of the stack. Suns trail by two. Ball is tipped, and it is stolen. And the Sky Force call for time with 27.6 left. And Tony Mitchell, and we talked about this earlier, has played 40 minutes tonight. And I don't know if it's coach speak or not, but Nevada Smith says, I don't know how much we're going to get out of Tony Smith tonight. He's been kind of sick all week. Got 40 minutes. That's coming up after the game. I'm asking him. That's one of my three questions that I get to ask Nevada Smith afterwards. Really? Tony Mitchell, 40 minutes. Don't know how much we're going to get. I got to see what's what's the high for minutes for Mitchell. So let's see. Mitchell had played 43 minutes in one game earlier this season. So a nearly a season high in minutes for Mitchell. There's still 27.6 left in this second overtime. And Rodney Pryor, Alonzo G, Ike Wabu, Larry Drew Two, and Tony Mitchell will be the ones to administer it. Skyforce need to get it in. They do. They're in backcourt. And Tony Mitchell falls down but keeps the dribble, and he lost the dribble, and it goes out of bounds. And with 21.5 left in the second overtime, the Suns have another opportunity. As the Sky Force lead it by two, 118, 116. Now they've got to play defense. And the Suns. How many lives did they have left? Is their gas tank going to run empty? With Mike Young, Xavier Silas, Josh Gray, Relier Hollis Jefferson. Peter Jock was in on that last defensive possession, but I imagine that they are going to switch that up. 
Well, maybe not. Because Harrison and Peters have fouled out. So the offensive options. Well, Peter Jock's a good shooter. So that's a good, that at least gives the Suns offensive weaponry at every position. Gray will be the inbounder. Gray to get it in. And he'll get it into Silas. Silas had Wamu draped on him. And then Silas, two defenders, 15 seconds left. Young. Young's going to drive. He'll get it in. He'll score. And we're tied at 118 with 11.9 left. And Mitchell will take it front court. Mitchell with six seconds. Mitchell's going to drive the lane. And he's fouled with 3.6 seconds left. So it's Mitchell to the line. And Mitchell. (laughs) What a wide dribble. But, boy, he was hacked on the arm. That foul on Young, and that's his second. And, of course, you got to get that foul in there. First free throw is good. Hits the free, hits the front rim and then nestles in. Had enough momentum to climb over. Mitchell with 22. Second one. Yes. So with 3.6 seconds remaining. Still not over. The timeout for Northern Arizona. They are out of timeouts. Sioux Falls has one, and I believe they both have the reset timeout. And, of course, with the shortened overtime periods, this is a double overtime currently. If it goes to triple overtime, keep in mind that... Triple overtime is not as taxing as triple overtime would be back when there were five-minute overtime periods. Silas, Young, Gray, Hollis Jefferson, and Jock for Northern Arizona. Prior G, Taylor, Wamu, and Mitchell for Sioux Falls. Gray to trigger, being hounded by Pryor. Silas for the win. No, it's blocked. Blocked out of bounds with .4 left. Silas put up the shot, being helped off the floor. Who was the one on the block? It was Wamu. Wamu came over and knocked it away, hit the baseline. I believe with four-tenths of a second left, you can catch and shoot a three-point shot. But with four-tenths of a second left, options limited for the Suns. Here we go. They get it in, lob it up, and it's blocked away at the buzzer by Rodney Pryor. And the game is over. It's all over. And the Sioux Falls Sky Force defeats the Northern Arizona Suns 120 to 118. What a game. 29 points for Ike Wamu. 26 for Alec Peters to lead the respective teams. But you got to look at Tony Mitchell, who willed his way through infirmity. 40 minutes off the bench, 23 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists. And in the final statistics, Tony Mitchell also had a couple of blocks. But nonetheless, the Sky Force win it. 120 to 118. Four blocks for Rodney Pryor. Three for Jimmy Taylor. Four for A.J. Hammonds. 14 blocks overall for the Sky Force tonight. Northern Arizona completes the night with a 44 of 110 performance, 40%. Sioux Falls, 40 of 88 for 45.5% on the night. Sky Force end up outscoring the Suns in the second half by 16 to force overtime and then finally come away with a two-point victory, 120 to 118. 
We're going to cut it off for all points involved in this one. And thanks for watching this presentation of the NBA G League on Facebook Live. And our team, TriCaster Director Kelsey Buckles, replay technician Brett Geese and Kirby Wall with the graphics. And for my engineer at the uh, Information 1000 KSOO Studios, Gail Scott, I'm Dan Peters. Our time together has ended. And blessings to you until we meet again. Thanks for, thanks for being a part of this copyrighted broadcast of the year 2017 in the NBA G League LLC. All rights reserved. So long from the Sanford Pentagon. This is the NBA G League. This copyrighted telecast of the...